Hi guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm back with another video. So in our application, what we've done so far, let's review really quickly. Sorry about not being able to make a video for so long, but I've got a life, man. I'm not just doing this. <laughs> Sorry about that, but yeah, I'm back with another, another video and then I've got a couple of uh, projects coming up. Really, really exciting, really, really interesting, and we'll be working on them together. So we created some projects. We can add a new project and we can also make changes to those projects for example we can add it and also we can go inside the projects we can see what details they have for example we can see what's the description unfortunately it's only short description but if you have a really big paragraph really long paragraph you can you can clearly see the description here and we can allocate tasks that only belong to specific project and we can also edit them we did that uh, in one of our last videos we'll get rid of this update url which is for debugging purpose, we, um, I did that, but we'll get rid of that. We don't really need that. And um, and yeah, so let's let's continue building further. So this template we copy pasted from our projects uh, template. So some of these buttons still point to the project controller. They are firing those methods. For example, if I say mark complete, or it's actually going to fire the project. It has brought us back to the projects and it has changed the projects uh, status to complete it which is which is wrong so we need to fix it so let's go back it's, this video is really going to be really quick because we we're not doing anything new we're just uh, replicating the same thing so this is our code so the very first thing we're going to do is create a route for this uh, button or um, yeah that's the best place to start so essentially what we're doing is we're creating a patch request to uh, one of the properties uh, in the task model which is also the database column the value which is a boolean value of false that's what we set up remember so let's go back to tasks table which is here and if you look at the task schema we created a property called completed and it's a boolean type and it's set to false which makes complete sense every time you create a new task or a new project or a subtask by default it's pending it's false and the only thing we can do with the boolean is set it to back to true or set it back to false that's all we can do so if it's pending it's going to show it'll be false in the database if it's completed it'll be true in the database or vice versa you know if the, if the database has true we're going to display as completed and the user has full control over it he can always set it back to true uh, the completed or pending and but in the Upcoming videos, once everything is finished, we'll be adding some of the logic, how this application should behave. For example, if a project is complete, 100% complete, and someone closes it, then it becomes an archived project, and it cannot be opened again. Under certain circumstances, only administrator, he can open it. So we will be creating a different user accounts and policies, which will, be, which will give us another layer of abstraction so we can control who can authorize the completion of project we can create where there are teams involved but that's that's too much of work for for now but you get the idea so now this is um, this is one of the um, HTML standard one of the methods we have one of the requests we can get the request type is patch request now what is this this is, uh, you might have heard a put request and patch request. You can use either of them. A put request essentially is, to my understanding, is if the value is not set, it's null, it's undefined, you can use a put request because you're putting something in to a variable or array or value or something, you know. But if it's already been set, then you are, you're just updating it. You're just uh, replacing it with a new value. So it's a patch request and you can do it as many number of times but when you put something you only do once I don't know if um, if you understand my meaning I mean I don't know how to define it properly so in this case because this property has already been created and initialized in the database to false a boolean value cannot be empty you have to initialize it either with a true or empty or false it cannot be null so it's not like a string, an empty string. No, it it must be initialized. It, by default, it's initialized to false. So since it's it has already been initialized, we can only uh, toggle it 
uh, using a patch request. So what we're going to do here is let's just make a copy, give it a little bit of padding. So we're going to create a new patch request and we're going to fire it to the task controller and we'll fire the completed method, that's fine. But uh, so we are completing a task that's belong, that belongs to a specific project. So we're going to need project slash project key because we, we're going to have to define Laravel um, which project you're talking about. And then we're going to include our particular task. That way, that particular task can be marked as complete or pending. That's sold to the routes. Let's get rid of this. The next thing we want to do is go back to the task controller and add the method. Now we don't have a method in place right now. So let's open up uh, project controller. My mouse has lost connection. I don't know what happened there. And uh, here. Let's just see, so we're using this same functionality for uh, task as well as subtask. At the moment, I'm just going to copy and paste this piece of code and just make some changes, but essentially it's going to be some kind of code duplication, which is not good. It's not really a duplicate, but it's extending the similar concept. So why don't we make create an event or even handler for this? which will be our next step in the next future videos. But at the moment, we're just trying to build a working prototypes and then we'll be working on our code to improve it a little bit. So creating an event you can, or a command, some kind of command, which we can fire every time this kind of functionality where there's a Boolean true false is triggered. We can use a command, but for now, let's just, um, okay, it's back online functioning. Let's just copy and paste here and then let's start making some changes here so we are talking about completed method on a project on a task that belongs to a specific project so we're going to give it um, let's just give it a give it give it an instance of we're talking about specific tasks so give that and also give it a give a project instance and let's just start making some changes so we are talking about task here. So everywhere, just change to change it to task, and then I'll come back and explain to you what what we are trying to do here. Okay. So if the task is false, which is true in our case, every time you create a new task is false. But once it's set to true, then this follows. Well, if it's not set to, if it's set to false, do this. If it's not set to false then do this. So we're going to need both the functionalities, both the both the um, both sides of the coin, let's just say that, you know. Every time there's a check, it's either true or false, you're going to have to look after both the possibilities. If it is false, mark it true, and then we're going to persist the database. Let's just do a little bit of indentation here. We're going to say we're setting the value to true and then we are persisting in the database using update method. So it, essentially it's a patch request which is basically perfect for up, update method. And you can call update method using post request as well. I would say so. But I guess patch is clearly designed for this, this kind of um, situation. So instead of um, redirecting back to projects um, because we are not really going back to the projects we are on tasks view which is the projects dot show let's just go back because it's it makes sense because if you look at it in the future you might change this if, even if you define even if you define projects dot tasks or projects dot show dot blade or, or you know the specific page we we are on currently you may want to change that page or you want to you may want you may want to change the name of that page in the future as the application grows and then you're going to have to make changes here so leave it empty and just go back 
to where the request came from because all we're doing is toggling a true or false we want to go back to the same page we are not entering any new information we are not going to any we are not doing any processing any kind of calculation that we have to see some different result so all the user want to do is mark it true or complete he must come back to the same page so return back is perfect in this situation but then again you're gonna to have to think about for example your site has been hacked for example and someone is sending a request and then he, since the request is coming from another website and if you haven't explicitly specified here it's gonna go back to the website it's gonna take the user back to that website and then he leaves your platform and he's on a third-party platform and if he created a replica of true replica of your website the user may think I'm using the same site but it's not the same site it's a different site it might be somewhere like in a remote location which is you know bad things can happen so sometimes being an ex being explicit can save you a lot of trouble in the future so this kind of code can make life easy but it's not secure I don't like it so I'll leave it there for now yeah we can say the cross-site scripting is not easy but then you know as you get smarter you put CSRF tokens or stuff like that the attackers uh, get smarter as well you know that's why they, they we call them hackers because they stay always one step ahead of us that's why we call them hackers we wouldn't call them hackers otherwise anyway um, that's just my thought on something like this but of course everybody has different opinion um, if it is false, mark it to true, persist it, take me back to where the request came from and display this message. Otherwise, if it's not false, that means it's true, then mark it false. Again, persist it. We're going to give a little bit of indentation here. And then redirect back with success task status has been changed to pending and save it. So that's what we're doing in the task controller. Now let's go back to our view. This is a view that displays the show dot blade that displays the, the form the all the all the tasks related to the particular project and we have just copied this bit from the last template the projects template and it's firing to the project controller completed method so let's just change it to task controller we'll fire the exact same method we'll provide it with a with an instance of the current project so project slug will provide so Laravel can um, do a query dynamically and of course we're gonna need a task slug now do we need this form model binding do we need this because essentially what it does is when you query a model it's gonna find the model the data and then it's gonna open up a form or something and then it's gonna pre-fill the data for us uh, all we are doing in this case is basically setting true or false we're not really f opening a form or anything so let's just get rid of this for a se second but we'll come back to this see if it works or if it doesn't work the method will remain patch and action is going to be this particular controller method and we're going to pass in our instances and some of the bootstrap classes and everything else remains same so we're going to do some testing here now so let's just refresh it, although we don't need to, but just do it for a second because um, the task slug and project slug needs to be placed upon. So refresh. And let's just view the source for a second before I hit complete it. So we have here, um, where is it? So we have here, um, add a new task and this is edit update and uh, description in i must have i have to put complete here i searched it that's quicker now if you look at here um so when you when you create this route it's creating this um form with this the name of the project as you can see here so you have to provide that uh, that project instance otherwise that route cannot be created you have to provide this project instance and 
did you notice there's something wrong? We didn't specify the task instance, so it doesn't know the correct URL here. Uh, I'll show you what why is it wrong. I'm gonna try to mark it pending, and you'll see we get this error. So method not allowed HTTP exception. That means you don't have a method in the route file. But if you remember, we did create a route. A route is task controller completed, and this is the the it's listening to this this route. This it needs projects key and task key. Now for some reason, if you notice in the um, source code, you'll see the URL it's firing up is projects slash project key in our in our project is this slug swimming dash lesson so it's firing up this key I'll just zoom it a little bit so you can see it better swimming dash lesson but it doesn't attach task slash task slash which task we are trying to update which is wrong. So what we'll do here is go back to our um, what's happening? Okay, go back to here and we'll just give it that model, that instance, and refresh the page for a second. Uh, you can refresh the source code. That's fine. And then you'll notice that now the correct URL is project and project key, the current project we're talking about, and the tasks slash task you're talking about and then it's firing up to the completed method that's the correct url where this information should go and then it'll laravel is able to um, persist the database so now if i do if i go back and refresh so the url is updated in the browser and then i mark it pending it should do it pending which it is doing correctly but did you notice something wrong it has marked both the tasks pending one was completed one was pending if you mark complete it does this one complete oh it's good maybe I saw something wrong I'll have to rewatch the video to, to see what did I miss um, yeah no it's working fine so I can mark this one pending it's pending oh I see what happened so completed is actually oh I've lost mouse connection again looks like I need new batteries um, but that's okay you get the idea so that's about that's for our um, so when I when I do this complete it it gets a little bit of padding because completed is longer than pending and when I do pending again it moves I thought that moving is due to you know both of them change but then anyway it's fine there's nothing wrong so that was something about toggling the status and in the next video we'll work on this hide button because currently if I hide it's firing the project see project has been hidden and when we go back we see nothing happened because we haven't given the project instance or we haven't given something you know which project we're talking about it's just funny so we'll have to fix that in the next video we'll fix that and then we'll continue to build subtask functionality we will write some logic after our application is finished so we can make it more meaningful Right now it's very dumb. We can continue to delete projects even if the tasks are still pending. I can delete this project and I can go to trash. Right now I'm hiding but I can go to trash and delete it even if it has pending tasks. That's just dumb because if you created some tasks you shouldn't be allowed to delete. It, it, it's got to be smart. Anyway, well thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.